Yeah, it was difficult. It was a difficult time being in that court every day when, you know, you stood behind glass uh, in like a glass petition. Um, just me and Milan Mandrick just sitting there and, you know, you, you sort of, you're almost looking at the jury to try to get some clues as to what they're thinking even, you know, uh, that, that you, you know, you don't get a smile off them or they don't even give you any eye contact. You know, we certainly, I never got any in, during the court case, so that was always difficult knowing what, what they're actually thinking and what their decision will be in the end. And, you know, and especially when you know that you're in a court when you're there over probably what amounted at the end of the day to about £10,000 income tax. And no disrespects, and I'm not being, you know, big-headed when I say it's, it, it, you know, it's something that wouldn't, you know, Milan had paid up hundreds and hundreds and millions of pounds of income tax. And I'd paid an awful lot of income tax in that five year period. So 10,000 pounds was, it was impossible that you would put yourself in trouble or take a chance to go and do something like that for that amount of money. It just was, it was, the whole thing was, was ridiculous really. But for whatever reason, the police decided they wanted, and the Crown Prosecution decided they want to make a case of it. And you stood there knowing that if you do get found guilty, you're going to go to prison probably for two or three years. That's how silly it all was. Well, obviously, great relief and just really want to get back home, you know, get home, see Sandra. She hadn't been in court. I wouldn't let her come to court because it would have killed her, really. It would have done me in as well, looking at her. You know, it was upsetting to see me stood behind her glass. And I, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I stood there and I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, what would my mum and dad have thought seeing me stood here? You know, they've never been in trouble with the police in their life. My dad worked all his life in the docks. My mum worked as an office cleaner all her life. Uh, you know, up at six in, up past five every morning, clean offices for a living. Um, and I've never broke the law, I've not done nothing wrong. Oh, I might have sped or, or, you know, I'd say I never broke the law in that respect, but I'm certainly brought up a good family. What am I doing stood here, really? And I mean, you're in a corridor every day, all different cases going on. There's all these people that have done different crimes. And I'm, I've got to sit there every day with these people who have, you know, raped their old lady or, or you know, armed robbery or whatever they've done, and I'm, I'm sitting there waiting to go in court along, alongside them, and uh, it just didn't seem right. I'll be honest with you. I thought it was the whole thing was 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 farcical, really, what we were put through. Yeah, no, I think I'd be more careful, but I am that way. I've lent people money over. I could I could write a book about people I've lent money to who haven't paid me back. We're 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 very trusting, easy going, and. Um, and that was enough, you know, when I went to say when that whole thing came about because Milan was going to make some investments for me uh, and I never knew if he did or didn't, to be honest with you, at the time it didn't even bother me.